uh, welcome back for the today's session and uh, i request to the uh, neera sir please uh, uh, request for the kartike kulkarli he will deliver the session so some basic idea and uh, offer to him now i would like to invite uh, kartike sir to please uh, join the session and uh, he is uh, working in uh, bharat sanchar nigam limited and uh, he from the last two years he is in with me touch and uh, he done lot of work on digital ledger technology and uh, cryptocurrency from the last two years he delivered various lecture on digital ledger technology and cryptocurrency at international platform he delivers four lectures in itu international telecommunication union platform and uh, two lectures on national level in the forum of ipeli now he is delivering on apt platform asia pacific telecommunicity so i welcome kartike sir thank you sir thank you neeraj sir thank you ak sir for this opportunity it's my pleasure to you know to deliver this lecture on this wonderful platform uh kartike uh, sir just i request to you uh, speed of uh, communication please slow ah uh, sure sir uh, 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 we all are uh, not getting faster no? okay thank you okay sir so now session hand over to kartike sir now i request to kartike sir please share the screen and uh, you feel that uh, you are comfortable or not right okay sir um just sharing my screen sir yes 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 ah uh, is my uh, screen is shared sir are you able to see my screen sir Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, your voice is clear, and your whatever you want to show is clearly shown to everybody. So uh, very good morning to one and all. Now in this uh, lecture, we we'll, we shall see about cryptocurrencies and digital ledger technologies. Okay, earlier in the previous uh, in the previous session by Navin, we uh, we you know we uh, he developed uh, regarding uh, uh, Bitcoin. Uh, uh, blockchain right now using blockchain how we uh, use blockchain in the implementation of this cryptocurrencies okay so let's start with what is a cryptocurrency cryptocurrency is a medium of exchange created and stored electronically in the blockchain using encryption techniques to control the creation of monetary units and to verify the transfer of funds okay so basically bitcoin is the cryptocurrency and that uses this blockchain technology so blockchain is the platform on based on this this uh, bitcoin is developed okay so basically it is not a uh, it's a cryptocurrency okay it's it's completely it will be in the completely in the digitized form not in the uh, normal fiat currency okay so it will be completely in the electronic form only so as normal currencies it is also a, uh, this cryptocurrency is also a medium of exchange such as the us dollar but it uses digital and uses encryption techniques to control the creation of money just because it is a uh, you know it is in electron form that doesn't mean that uh, it can be created as we wish okay it, it will be created but in a controlled fashion okay and bitcoin is the most famous cryptocurrency but it is not the only cryptocurrency and there are some more cryptocurrencies are there such as ethereum ripple litecoin etc and the users who create bitcoin are called as miners okay actually they mine the bitcoins so as we can as everybody can generate bitcoins so one question comes up whether uh, can we generate as many bitcoins as we wish and when required actually the answer is both yes and no basically in the previous years that means in the early stages of bitcoin uh, the bitcoins are mined using with normal cpu uh, normal cpus but over a period of time the computational capability is very much increased the requirement of computer computational capability is very much uh, increased okay so 
in the earlier years it was relatively easier to mine a bitcoin and was possible to uh, you know it is it was possible to do with a normal cpu but nowadays it is not not at all possible okay mining difficulty increases with the increasing mining power the pers- uh, the users who have the better mining power will have the better chance of uh, mine a bitcoin so if we have the better mining power then we will be able to create more bitcoins okay in the present scenario a new block will be added every 10 minutes on average and f- for uh, adding of new block they, the users the miners will be rewarded with a bitcoin okay so in order to mine a bitcoin the users be challenged will be given with a mathematical puzzle in this case bitcoin the puzzle is proof of work crack that puzzle he will be rewarded for the work okay what computational power electricity are the investments that means he has to invest time and energy and he has to he should have good computational power and electricity and for running for that uh, uh, processors he need electricity so these are the investments from the miner side okay so what factors you know affect the mining profitability, uh, profitability and the factors are hash rate block reward mining difficulty electricity cost power consumption bitcoin's price and difficulty in increase okay so we shall see now the miner revolution how at the beginning of this uh, that means the, when the uh, bitcoin uh, when the this bitcoin is emerging what was the scenario at the beginning and what is the present situation now so in the early stages of bitcoin users used to do with cpu that means normal our cpu they you uh, with our normal cpu users uh, miners used to mine the bitcoins with normal cpu itself but after some time as we know this for uh, mining we need good computational power right so slowly the users miners migrated from cpu mining to gpu mining so instead of cpu they started using gpu okay and even that also that is not sufficient and after uh, you know uh, this gpu mining is 30 times faster but that was also not sufficient at the time so again they migrated to fpga field programmable gate errors okay this xilinx and some and these are the manufacturers of fpgas so so the users miners has migrated from gpu to fpga mining and now it is also outdated now they use the mining they use asic asic means application specific integrated circuit that means this ic is only suitable for only doing only certain type of calculations so this is only dedicated for the mining only this asic means application specific integrated circuit they specifically use it only for the mining that's it and this is the current trending but as as how the computational power is increased the demand for electricity also increased over a period of time okay so basically gpu consumes more power than cpu and fpga consumes more power than gpu and asic consumes more power than fpga so this is how the demand for electricity increased and according to one statistic of the whole world 50% of the electricity is consumed in the china itself in the present scenario so basically it has evolved not only this bitcoins has evolved not only from as a cryptocurrency it has uh, you know it has out uh, they had overgrown the concept of currency now it has spread to this uh, token so some of the cryptocurrencies the idea beyond the one minute so some of the cryptocurrencies some of the cryptocurrencies took the idea beyond the idea of a simple digital currency and the term token sprang into existence to signify all the different things you could do besides simply buying stuff let me tell you the main difference between the coin and token okay coin is like a normal currency like 10 dollars or 10 rupees or 10 euros you can directly go to market and you can uh, you can directly go to market and you can buy the required things but when uh, where it comes to token the one example is movie tickets or railway tickets 
okay this is uh, that means the tokens can be used only for specific kind of product or service okay uh, they are not interchangeable that means we can't go to market just because i have a movie ticket i can't go to some uh, grocery shop and i can buy vegetables with that movie ticket i can't do that that is not for this uh, that is not the purpose of this token we have a movie ticket all i can do is i can go to a movie theater and i can watch movie that's it that is the main difference between coin and token okay but coins are not like that we can do whatever you want that is the main difference between this coin and token and again there are different kinds of token there are utility token currency token security token asset token and for each type of service these different service uh, these different tokens are used see some of the tokens and currencies are used for different types of production services such as crypto shares cryptocurrencies like that now bitcoin the fam most famous cryptocurrency so basically bitcoin is a decentralized digital currency that you can buy sell and exchange directly without an intermediary like bank basically in our normal transactions if i want to buy some product if i have to uh, for example if i want to buy a product on online and who will be the intermediary the bank bank has to verify the transaction they has to address the transaction after then only i can buy whatever i want okay but when it comes to this cryptocurrency or bitcoin there is no need of that intermediary like a bank okay the bitcoin's creator satoshi nakamoto originally described the need for an electronic payment system based on cryptographic proof instead of trust okay and uh, one more thing is actually the ledgers in the bank are not is not uh, accessible to everyone but when it comes to cryptocurrencies such as this bitcoin each and every bitcoin transaction that has ever been made exists on public ledger accessible to everyone making making transactions hard to reverse and difficult to fake so the main advantage the main advantage of this bitcoin is this one it is accessible to everyone and the second thing is the transactions are very hard to reverse for uh, for suppose if something uh, some uh, uh, wrong transactions happened then you can't delete the transaction the only way to do that is we need to counter the transaction that means for example if instead of uh debiting 10 dollars uh, if 10 dollars are credited you cannot delete that credit of 10 dollars transaction the all we need to do is again we have to do the counter transaction as uh, such as uh, debit of 20 dollars like that okay these transactions are very hard to reverse once a block is added to the blockchain it is very hard to reverse this that action transaction and these are very difficult to fake these are the main advantages of bitcoin so earlier we uh, we saw that right each and every miner will be challenged with a puzzle only after solving that puzzle only they will be rewarded so bitcoin bitcoin miners use powerful computers to verify the block of transactions and generate more bitcoins a complex time consuming process called proof of work they have to solve this puzzle called proof of work only after solving this puzzle they will be rewarded the they will be rewarded with bitcoins in the previous slide we saw that bitcoins is very hard to reverse very hard to fake and uh, the access are, uh, in it uh, the ledger is accessible to everyone right these are only some part of some part of the advantages and the other advantages are bitcoins allows users to make transparent peer to peer transactions all are transparent okay all users can view these transactions however they are secured through the algorithm within the blockchain that means even though everyone can see the transaction only the owner of the bitcoin can decrypt it with the private key that is given to each owner that means just because it is transparent means we can't uh, you know go to the in detail of each and every transaction we can say okay this this is what is happened but the what has actually happened 
can be viewed only by the owner with the help of this private key each and every owner will have a own private key the each and every owner will have a own private key that means uh, some your, some others some others owner can be used to decrypt another transactions okay one to one mapping like that so various attributes of transaction basically size size means how many bytes weight means it is the metric given by the blockchain receive time means it's just time stamp included in blocks this uh, in this example uh, it is given like for four nine triple two nine right this is the uh, identification number of that particular blockchain confirmations how many miners have uh, have uh, confirmed with this transaction okay and total input total output btc means bitcoins and fees means how much fee they were paid Fee per, uh, fee per byte, 41 sat by B. Actually, uh, this sat means 41 uh, Satoshis. Basically, this is our uh, denominations. We shall see later what are the denominations. For the time being, denomination means actually rupees or dollars of the currencies. But $10, $20, 20 cents, 10 rupees, 100 rupees. These are the denominations. Like in this manner, you can say Satoshi means, uh, 41 Satoshi means it is the denomination in Bitcoin currency. Basically, uh, payment transaction in the Bitcoin network. How this transaction happens? Basically, each and every transaction starts with, with the sender signing the transaction with their own private key. We saw that right earlier. Each and every owner will have his own private key. He need he needs to start with that private key. He has to sign in with that private key. Then. It has to be broadcasted, broadcasted. I mean, transmitted across the network. Why? Because miners has to uh, authorize that transaction, right? So the transaction is broadcasted to the network. Then miners listening for the transaction picks up the transaction. So for this purpose, the transaction is broadcasted all over the network. Next, the transaction the transactions are verified by the validity of the miner. Uh, Validity by the miner. So miners actually validate the transaction, whether it is, I uh, mean, it uh, whether it is authentic or not, whether to add that block to the blockchain or not, is basically decided by the miners. After it is after a transaction is validated and verified by the miners, it the transactions are added to the proposed block for mining. So the transaction will be added to the blockchain. As a new block, once mined, the result is broadcasted to all nodes on the Bitcoin network. Okay, so this is the basically the payment transaction in the Bitcoin network. This is how a transaction happens. Okay, here why the result is broadcasted to all the nodes in the Bitcoin network means this is the this is how the main security feature hard to fake right. Why this? Uh, why it is very hard to fake is because of this last part. Once mined, the result is broadcasted to all nodes in the Bitcoin network. So, if someone wants to fake the transaction, he has to do in minimum at least fifty-one percent of the total nodes. Okay, faking uh, you know faking a transaction in one node is simple, but doing that uh, faking the transaction in fifty-one percent of the whole number of nodes is very difficult, right? That is why. The transactions yeah, uh, happened in Bitcoin are very hard to fake. Next, various denominations in Bitcoin. Earlier we saw right in that various attributes of in that slide we saw Satoshi. See, uh, I will show you once again. See here in the fee per byte it is written as forty seven sat by B right for byte they are charging the fees is forty one Satoshis. So these are the various denominations in a Bitcoin. Like Satoshi means the uh, it is equal to point not 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 one BTC. BTC means one Bitcoin. The, uh, then the other is micro bit, milli bit, centi bit, deci bit, Bitcoin, decabit, hectobit, kilobit, megabit, such as 
ten dollars, hundred dollars, like that. Okay. Digital keys and addresses. Earlier uh, we have we saw that each and owner will be having that keys, right? That private key. Each and private key is a digital key. Actually, the pri uh, private keys are developed are using this curve. This curve is called as equi um, cryptic curve, ECC curve. Using this curve only, these private keys are generated. And we will give public as input and we will have private key for that particular owner. Private keys in Bitcoin. Basically, for any transaction, if you have owner, if I am a, an owner of a Bitcoin, if I have to uh, have to start a transaction, I need to use my I I need to sign into the uh, into the network, right? I use my private key to sign into the transaction. Private keys are required to be kept safe and normally results only on the owner side. With the help of this private key only, owners can sign into the transaction. So they have to make it. Uh, they have to make it secure. Okay, they should not relieve it, uh, relieve the private key. And even, not only for signing, even for the decryption of a transaction also, they you need to, uh, owners, you need to use their own private keys to decrypt a transaction. Earlier we saw, right, all transactions are transparent and each and everyone can know the transaction. But to be, to see the details, the owners has to have to use the private key to decrypt the transaction. Private keys are used to digitally sign the transaction, proving the ownership of the bitcoins. So, with the help of this private keys only, I mean, uh, the owners prove their ownership with the help of this private keys. Okay. So, private keys are fundamentally two specific bit numbers. That means, in the form of binary numbers, 0101, like that, in a total of 256 bits. And the range is specified by this SECP 256K1 ECDSA curve recommendation. According to this curve recommendation, the private keys are chosen. So the valid range of 256 bit numbers are from uh, 0x means hexa. This is an hexadecimal format. We, uh, we know right in hexadecimal format as how in decimal format the valid digits are 0 to 9. In hexadecimal, the valid digits are 0 to F. That's why. Here, zero x represents the hexadecimal format. Okay, so the valid range of two fifty six bit numbers are one to FFF like this. This is the range. Okay, and one example of a private key is this one D A A E D C E six A F four eight. This is an example of valid private key, and this is generated using the curve, the curve recommendation, E C D S A curve recommendation using that. Curve recommendation, this key is generated. So, private keys are usually encoded with using valid import format, WF format, in order to make them easier to copy and use. It is a way to represent the full size private key in different format. WF can be converted into private key and vice versa. That means basically there's a symmetric. Okay, uh, we will have. Uh, full version and and we can't uh, note all those 256 digits, uh, digits right it's very hard to do it so for that purpose to overcome that problem we use uh, these private keys are encoded with wallet import function uh, wallet import format they are encoded with so in order to make them easier to copy and use if you have like this uh, take this for example uh, this previous uh, this is a valid key right it is very hard to remember it is very hard to use right so uh, to make it usable this should be user friendly right so to make that usable these private keys are encoded using wir wallet import format in order to make them easier to copy and use okay so basically it for, uh, the format itself gets changed here for example this is a private key 
when it is converted to WM format, it like, uh, looks like this. Basically, this uh, encoding and decoding keys are symmetric. That means once we, if we feed this private key, this example, we'll get this uh, key in this WIF format. Again, if we once feed this uh, key in WIF format, we'll get the original private key. These are symmetric, encoding and deco uh, decoding. These are mini private. So basically, uh, earlier we saw, uh, right? It is 256. Oh, sorry. 256 bits. And this is the, uh, this big, right? See? It was 32 characters. But it's big. To compress that, we use mini private format. Okay, a mini private format is sometimes used to create the private key with a maximum of up to 30 characters in order to allow storage where physical space is limited. For example, etching on a physical coins. If you have a physical coin, it is where to how to write that whole private key, uh, whole key, right? So for that purpose, we use this mini private key format. It will contain a maximum of 30 characters. Okay. When the physical, especially when the physical space is limited, this is used. Uh, uh, the uses are such as in this one, etching on physical coins or encoding uh, damage resistance QR codes like that. Okay. The QR code becomes more damage resistance because of more dots can be used for error connection and less for encoding the private key. Okay. The private key encoded using mini private key format is also called as mini key. These are also called as mini keys. Okay. The first character of mini private key is always an uppercase S. So we can identify that uh, whether it is a original key or a mini private key by observing the first character. For any mini key, the first character is always capital S. A mini private key can be converted into normal size private key by but an existing normal size, <coughs> sorry, a mini private key can be converted into a normal size private key, but an existing normal size private key cannot be converted into a mini private key. Okay, that, may, that means not symmetric. We, uh, we can generate a mini private key using a normal private key, but uh, this is not a uh, symmetric function. That means if you have a uh, normal private key, you can generate a mini private key. But if you have a mini private key, we cannot get the uh, normal private key. Okay. Public keys in Bitcoin. Public keys exist on the blockchain and all network participants can see it. Okay. Public keys are derived from the private keys due to their special mathematical relationship with the private keys. That means we here we have an asymmetric encryption, right? That means if we give this recipient private key, we'll get the public key. Here, we need to focus on this word asymmetric. Asymmetric means basically here we have two keys, right? Public key and private key. Basically here, what is happening? If we are giving the private key, we are getting a public key, right? But there is uh, one thing we should be, uh, we need to take care. The, the thing is, if we give this uh, public key to the encryption program, we should not get the private key. If that happens, then the, uh, uh, what do you call, this security, uh, you know, can't be achieved. You got my point, right? That means, see, public key, is available on the network and everybody can see it. And the private key, only owner has to able to use it and view it. So uh, private key should be with the owner only, but the public key should be, uh, what do you call, can be seen by all the participants in the network. So here we should use an encryption such that 
for suppose if we give the public key as a input to the encryption we should not get the private key if that happens then uh, we uh, if that happens then owner uh, uh, not only owner everybody can see that private key right so this should not happen for this purpose we use asymmetric encryption asymmetric encryption basically there are two types of encryptions symmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption basically i will uh, explain you with this example for suppose there is a uh, a and b are two keys for a symmetric encryption if we gave a as the input we will give uh, we'll get b output for symmetric en encryption if we give the same b as input to that say, uh, symmetric encryption we will get same a you know you got my point right so if you give a as input will be uh, b as output if we b give as input will give a, a as output so this is the example of symmetric encryption but this is not desirable in blockchain so the other type of encryption is asymmetric encryption that is if you give a as input to asymmetric encryption we will get b but once if we give b as input to the asymmetric encryption we will not get a we will get something else so this is how the private key will be uh, kept secret okay this is the main use of this asymmetric en encryption using private key we will get public key but with the help of public key we not get the private key that's why we use here en uh, asymmetric encryption once a transaction signed with private key is broadcasted on the bitcoin ether public keys are used by the nodes to verify that transaction has indeed signed by the corresponding private key okay so this public key is used to verify whether whether the i mean whether whether the transaction is valid or invalid they are authentic or not authentic then the nodes will verify the transaction with the help of this public key which is they are using private key of the owner this pro, uh, this process of verification proves the ownership of the bitcoin okay so this is how okay uh, this is how the verification of a transaction happens with the public key so bitcoin uses ecc based on the secp 256k1 standard ecc means Eki crypto karo, ECC karo. Earlier you saw this one, right? This one, this is the ECC karo. So we do, using this curve only, we'll get this private and public case. A public key is 256 bits in length. The length of the each public key is 256 bits. As uh, how we have uh, this normal private key and mini private key, this public keys also can be represented in a compressed format or uncompressed, uncompressed format. Public keys are fundamentally X and Y coordinates on an elliptic, uh, elliptic curve. In an uncom uncompressed format, public keys are presented with a prefix of four in a hexadecimal format. As I told you earlier, zero X means it represents hexadecimal format. The X and Y coordinates are both 32 bit in length. In total, the compressed public key is 33 bytes long as compared to 65 bytes in the uncom uncompressed format. Okay, we saw this right. Uh, a public key is 256 bits. Once, if we want to convert into hexa format, how many characters will get 256 by 4? That is 64 characters. That means 64 uh, hexadecimal numbers, right? So that's why we have 64. But in a compressed public key, we'll have only 32. 33 bytes long okay the compressed version of public keys includes only the x part since the y part can be derived from it so keys are identified by uh, by various prefixes earlier we saw that right mini private key is identified by what 
by you, uh, each and every mini private key will start with a letter s with the first first character is always yes by using that character we can this uh, we can identify th that is a mini private key like this here also keys can be identified by using various prefixes for uncompressed public keys we use 0 4 as the prefix that means the first two characters of any public key uncompressed public key is 0 4 And any uncompressed public key starts with 0, 3. If y is 32 bit part of the public key is odd. Okay. Again, here uh, there are two things. This uh, y coordinate is there, right? It can be either odd or even. If that y coordinate is odd number, then the pub, uh, compressed public key starts with 0, 3. If the y coordinate is an even number, then the compressed public key starts with 0, 2. Okay. So, like this, we can identify. There are three things. There are um, three prefixes 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. If it is 0, 2, then we can, uh, if it is 0, 2 or 0, 3, we can say that it is a compressed public key. If the prefix is 0, 4, then we can identify that is an uncompressed public key. Again, if we have 0, 2, 0, 3, of, uh, prefixes. That means if you have the prefix of 0, 2, then we can identify that the y coordinate is a even number. Okay. If the prefix is 0, 3, then we can identify that that compressed public key is y coordinate is odd number. Okay. Addresses in Bitcoin. A Bitcoin address is created by taking the uh, by taking the corresponding public key of a private key and hashing it twice with the SHA-256 algorithm and then with RIPEMD-160. These two are algorithms. SHA means Secured Hashing Algorithm 256-bit. That means it hashes, <coughs> it uses 256-bit en uh, encryption. The resultant 160-bit hash is then prefixed with a version number finally encoded with a base 58 check encoding scheme. The Bitcoin addresses are 26 to 35 characters long and begin with digit 1 or 3. These are the addresses. Okay, not private keys. This 0 to earlier, what we saw in the earlier case, the prefixes 0 to 0, 3, 0, 4 are for public keys, but these are not uh, public keys. These, you know, these prefixes uh, digits are, are talking about addresses in Bitcoin. A typical Bitcoin address looks like this string of characters, like this here in this example. 1A, NA, GU, like this. This is also commonly encoded in QR code for easy distribution. This is very hard to distribute, right? We can't uh, share this one. So, this string is encoded in the QR code and that can be distributed easily. The QR code of this uh, Bitcoin. Uh, that address is, the, is shown in this uh, QR, QR code. See here. Basically, there are two types of addresses commonly used. They are P2P KH and P2P SH. Starting with number one and three respectively, in the early days, Bitcoin used direct pay to public key, which is now superseded by P2P KH. For some coin based addresses, direct pay to public is still used in Bitcoin. So, here address should not be used more than once. Otherwise, privacy and security issues can arise. Avoiding addresses reuse circumvents the anonymity issues to an extent. Okay, so uh, basically, it's like a one to one mapping. If the same thing is used for many times, we can't identify the uh, uh, what do you call it? user right? So only once each and every address should be only used only once. Transactions malleability has been resolved with so called segregated witness soft fork upgrade of the Bitcoin protocol. Yes, 58. This basically this is an encoding scheme. C 
Firstly, Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin addresses are encoded using base fifty eight check coding. The encoding is used to limit the confusion between various characters such as see uh, we have all range of characters right in a Bitcoin address like we have zero, o, one, l all looks like the same thing. But you know, but the same thing can be represented in different fonts and different formats, right? To remove that confusion, we use this encoding. This encoding will uh, basically takes the binary byte arrays and converts them into human readable strings. The string is composed by utilizing a set of fifty-eight alphanumeric symbols. How Bitcoin address is uh, how a Bitcoin address is generated. We shall see now. We have a covered private key, public keys, base fifty-eight encoding, <laughs> and addresses. Right now, we shall see how a Bitcoin address is generated. In the first step, we have a randomly generated ECDSA private key. Okay. Then the public key is derived from the private key. Earlier we saw right in the uh, asymmetric uh, using asymmetric encryption using private key, we will generate a public key. The public key is then hashed using SHA-256 algorithm. Again, this the output of the uh, uh, encrypted uh, output form from this uh, uh, SHA-256 algorithm is again hashed using RIPEMD160 algorithm. Next, the prefix version number is. <clears throat> Is added, okay. Again, this uh, after the uh, after this again, it is encrypted using SHA two fifty six algorithm twice. And finally, DS58 encoding is implemented. And from that, finally, we'll have a Bitcoin address. So for a generation of a single Bitcoin, this much process, this many steps have to be performed. So if you want to make an address much more uh, less random, we use vanity address vanity address is an address which is uh, which part of it is chosen by yourself making it look less random okay so vanity address look less uh, random than all the normal addresses how it works enter the prefix or suffix of your choice and click generate to start okay so in this website you can do this this vanity eth.ek your browser will generate a lots of random addresses until one matches your input once an address is found, you can reveal the private key or click the save button to download the password encrypted key store file. You can increase the number of working threads to reach higher speeds or decrease if you want. Uh, if your computer struggles, that means if uh, uh, that means uh, if uh, uh, depending on the speed, we'll run more threads. Okay. How security is achieved? Everything is computed only in your browser. So how secure is the, is our vanity address? Okay, everything is computed only in our browser, right? Nothing leaves our machine, even your browser tab. Just because it is access uh, access to internet, that doesn't mean that you know somebody anybody can access. Uh, some hacker can uh, uh, you know um, take our uh, vanity address. Uh, you know it won't happen like that. There is no database, no server side code. Everything vanishes when you close your tab. And if you want to demonstrate this one, once uh, you load this web page, vanity.eth.ek, after the web page is loaded, we can turn off the internet and we can check. It still works. So there is no service, uh, server side coding. Oh, there is no database. It just runs only on our browser. Okay. Or we can download the latest build vanity eth here and completely offline computer. So we can do it in an offline manner or online manner also. 
okay and this is an 100% open source that means everybody can access it and even it is available on github then the eth or cryptographically cryptographically secure pseudo random number generator to generate ethereum addresses okay basically ethereum is uh, another type of uh, cryptocurrency okay is the next uh, is next to bitcoin yeah, bitcoin is the most famous uh, uh, cryptocurrency right ethereum is the next uh, next next best to uh, bitcoin the key store file encrypted with aes advanced aes means advanced encryption standard 128 ctr cipher using bkdf sha256 derivation function with 65536 hashing rounds okay and here only we have in this case only single address now we, uh, in multi signature addresses we need to provide more than one address the addresses require multiple private keys okay in practical terms it means that in order to release the coins a certain signatures is required a certain set of signatures that means not only one private key we need to provide uh, more number of private keys okay this is also known as m of n multi sec that means of total n uh, private keys at least we need to provide m private keys m is the threshold okay here m represents the threshold or the minimum number of signatures required from n number of keys to release the bitcoins that means out of n number of private keys at least at a minimum of we need to provide m number of private keys to generate uh, release the bitcoins see here the wallet owner initiates a transaction two of the three signatures are required to complete a transaction earlier we need to provide only one uh, one private key right but here in multi signature addresses to generate one address we need to use uh two of the three means here m equal to 2 and n equal to 3 that means out of three a uh, private keys at least we need to give two private keys this is what this two of three signatures means that means it is of m of n signature that means it represents a multi signature address to generate one uh, uh, single address at least we need to give minimum two private keys earlier in the address generation we uh, in the first step we gave uh, private key to generate a public key right here in multi signature addresses to generate one multi signature address we need to give at least m multi addresses i mean m uh, private keys that means in the in this two of three signatures case we need to give at least two private keys to generate that bitcoin address okay in the second step a co-signer must authorize the initiated transaction okay so someone has to authorize the transaction see here this wallet owner generally initiates the transaction and the co-signer authorizes the transaction then it will go to the uh, receiver only the authorized transaction will be approved and sent to the receiver okay that means only after the co-signer authorizes the transaction then only it will go to the receiver this is how this multi sig wallets work okay the main difference is in the earlier cases to generate one bitcoin address we we give only we use only one private key but when it comes to multi signature addresses we need to provide uh, if uh, m of n multi signature we need to provide at least a minimum of m private keys that means out of uh, we can provide n private keys also but to generate one single bitcoin address we need to give a minimum of m private keys okay in this example of two of three signatures we need to give at least two private keys to generate one address type of transactions p2p key hash means pair to public key hash pair to public key hash is the most commonly used transaction type and it is used to send transaction to bitcoin addresses the format of the transaction is like this so the transactions are using scripts right so this will be the format of the transaction 
what are the pros of this using uh, what are the pros in using the p2p kh that means pay to public key hashing yep the the main advantage is it is reliable in transactions as users can share their public keys in order to exchange their value with each other okay next advantage is public keys are hashed into a fixed size string that is much smaller this means that it can be stored in medium such as qr codes okay okay we are generating addresses and everything but they should be uh, user friendly right so uh, the one of the advantage of this pay to public key hashing is the fixed length of the string is very much sm uh, small so this can be encoded into uh, our qr codes okay also smaller keys means fewer mistakes and network bandwidth used to compare p2pk addresses okay if we have less number of uh, 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 small uh, if the length of the string is less there are the, there is a there is less chance of mistake and less uh, um, requirement of uh, bandwidth the script is uh, simpler compared to its counterparts and therefore easier to use but there are some disadvantages for this one also the disadvantages are it is an additional complexity that goes into generating of such addresses okay uh, you know it adds additional complexity the script was more implemented before segwit therefore legacy addresses are incompatible with the variables that use this script so there are some compatibility issues such as this one users and users can send a transaction from p2p kh addresses that means pay to public key hashing addresses to a segwit address however the fees for such a transaction are very high okay these are the main disadvantage of the, this one the first thing is it adds complexity and and the second one is compatible compatibility issues p2p sh pay to script hash it is used in order to send transaction to a script hash that that is the address is starting with 3 and was standarded in bip 16 in edit, in addition to passing the script the read script is also evaluated must be validated the template will be like this okay multi sig pay to multi sig m of multi sig multi sig means multi signature transaction script is more complex type why because earlier we have uh, in normal addresses we we have only one private key right but in multi signature addresses what do we need we need to provide more than one private key so it is more complex so m of n multi sig transaction script is more complex type of script where it is possible to construct a script that required multiple signatures to be valid in order to read in a transaction okay so various complex transactions such as escrow and deposits can be built using this script the main advantage of using this multi signature is it is very highly secure okay here in this case we need, uh, we need to provide not only one private uh, private key we need to provide more number of private key so here see here in this picture if we want to unlock this wallet uh, wallet we need to provide two out of three signatures that means uh, we need to provide at least a minimum of two private keys to unlock this wallet in multi signatures we have one initiator one authenticator ra multi sig is obsolete and that means it is a earlier version multi sig is usually part of p2 sh that means pay to secure hash reading script mentioned in the previous pay to public key the script is very simple script that commonly used in coin based transactions though it is obsolete but it was used earlier in the uh, previous version of bitcoin okay the public key is stored within the transcript in the case and the unlocking script is required to sign the transaction with the private key okay if you want to unlock the script again we need to use the private key that is used in the transaction to unlock that script so basically the transactions are issued through the scripts that's why we are uh, you know uh, we are uh, discussing about scripts why because the transactions happens with the help of the scripts so the script is used null data the script is used to store arbitrary data on the blockchain for a fee okay suppose if you want to store some data 
then we use this kind of script. The limit of the message is 40 bytes. That means you can store up to 40 bytes of data. And this is the template. Next, we shall see about mining. What is mining? It is a process by which new blocks are added to the blockchain and the my, uh, and are validated by the mining process by mining nodes in the uh, network. For example, what happens in the uh, blockchain? Generally, uh, you know, we generate a transaction and all the other nodes in the network, they will validate the transaction, right? This validation of the transaction is called the mining. Mining means it is a process by which new blocks are added to the blockchain. Okay. See here in the adjacent figures, in the above picture, we'll see the A6 here. See here how many A6 in this picture they are using. And in the below figure, the that is the, the bitcoins are coming out of that one. Okay, blocks once mined and verified are added to the blockchain, which keeps the blockchain growing. These are some intensive due to the requirements of proof of work. Why do we need this many ASICs? Why? Because in order to mine a bitcoin, we need to solve one math, mathematical puzzle, right? Earlier we saw, and that mathematical puzzle is nothing but the proof of work. In order to solve this uh, proof of work, we need a uh, huge computational power. So because of that one, it is very resource in incentive. Uh, you know, these are not cheaper to buy, right? ASICs are, that's why. The miners mint new coins by solving the proof of work problem, also known as partial hash inversion problem. Basically, this mining involves a huge amount of resources. It consumes a huge amount of resources, including computing power, electricity, time, and effort. Earlier, uh, miners used to do on a solo basis. That means on one-on-one, -on -one they used to do. Now, uh, the current trend is uh, miners are, you know, they, uh, uh, they form a group and they start mining. I mean, they are pooling their resources to um, uh, mint, the, to mine more Bitcoins. Now, miner, what the miners are doing is they are, forming as a pool that means uh, as a team that means they pool their resources and they start uh, minting their bitcoins why do we need to go through all this pain is to secure the system against fraud and double spending uh, attacks so security is the main advantage provided by the blockchain so one block is created or mined for every 10 minutes to control the frequency of the generation of Bitcoins. So nowadays, earlier we saw, right? For, on an average, for every 10 minutes, one block is added to the blo uh, existing block. New, uh, new block is added to the existing block. Okay. This new block adding is called, the, is called as mining. Uh, this frequency, that means for every 10 minutes, one uh, block has to be added, right? This has to be maintained by the Bitcoin network. Nobody else going to do it. The Bitcoin network ha has to maintain this frequency. For every 10 minutes, one block has to be added. That's it. It is encoded in the Bitcoin core client to control the money supply. Approximately for 144 blocks added, a total of 1,728 Bitcoins are generated per day. The supply of Bitcoin is also very much limited. By 20, uh, 2140, 21 million Bitcoins will be finally created and no more will be created further. That's why the supply of Bitcoin is very much limited. But miners can profit even though, uh, even after uh, 2140, so even after 2140, miners can still advantage from the Bitcoin, even after all the Bitcoins are created. Why? Because by charging transaction fees. In the uh, one slide of uh, various attributes of transaction, right? We saw there uh, some uh, 41 sat per Bitcoin like that uh, for byte. So for a uh, uh, validation of transaction also, 
the miners charge uh, some fee so even after bitcoin is mined uh, even if all the 21 million bitcoins are mined still the miners can profit by mining what are the tasks of miners This is the first step, syncing within the network. Once a node connects to the Bitcoin network, there are so many tasks to be performed. <clears throat> okay, so if one node, one transaction comes uh, into the network for uh, validation, all the uh, nodes, it has to download the blockchain by requesting historical blocks from the other nodes. Uh, uh, the, all the history of the node has to be downloaded. This is called the syncing uh, up with the network. Okay. Next, validation. Transaction is validated and done by the miners. And then that uh, uh, validated transaction must be broadcasted across the network. Right. And then finally, new block is created. And to create that new block, proof of work has to be performed. And for uh, solving this uh, puzzle proof of work, they will be rewarded with Bitcoins. Now, up to now, we saw about only one type of cryptocurrency that is Bitcoin. But Bitcoin is not the only cryptocurrency. There are some other cryptocurrencies. Okay. And one such famous cryptocurrency is Ethereum. Okay. Ether is the need to Ethereum currency which was developed as a form of payment on the Ethereum platform. This Ethereum cryptocurrency, Ether, is created with the, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, to suit the financial transactions. Uh, uh, this is specifically developed for the financial products. Okay, the goal behind Ethereum is to create a decentralized suit of financial products that anyone can in the world can freely access regardless of the nationality, ethnicity, and faith. Okay. So it is more, this is more uh, developed for the, um, suited for the financial products. Okay. In 2016, Ethereum was split into Ethereum, e Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. Okay. As of September 2021, Ether was the number two virtual currency behind Bitcoin. Earlier I told you, right, Bitcoin is the most famous. Uh, cryptocurrency and Ether is the second famous cryptocurrency. Okay, Ether is also generated using proof of work. So the, uh, you know, uh, Bitcoin uses blockchain, right? And blockchain uses which type of consensus theorem? Um, cons uh, consensus theorem, it uses proof of work. So Ether also uses proof of uh, work system, POW. But in 2021, Ethereum transcends its uh, consensus algorithm from proof of, proof of work to proof of stake. And the motive behind this transition is to make that Ethereum network run itself with far less energy and improve transaction speed as well as to make for more deflationary economic environment. Basically, there are some, there are some disadvantages with the blockchain, such as it takes so much of time. Uh, that means it, uh, to add a new block in uh, Bitcoin, we need, uh, uh, it takes uh, 10 minutes, right? So the transaction speed in uh, Bitcoin is very much limited. So to make the system faster, the Ethereum has moved to uh, translate its uh, consensus algorithm from proof of work to proof of stake. By doing like this, the main uh, the advantages it gain are that Bitcoin, uh, this uh, Ethereum network can run with less far less energy and improve transaction speed. In Bitcoin, we saw right, it demands high amount of electricity, right? But this uh, Ethereum network with the, help, uh, with the help of using the proof of stake algorithm, far less energy is required and the transaction speed is also very much improved. For the sake of this one, Ethereum has transferred from proof of work to proof of stake. Okay. The consensus mechanism in Ethereum is based on the greedy heaviest observed subtree, ghost protocol proposed initially by Arthigesa, Sahar and 
yeah all participants uh, i think our 90 minutes is over now so let me take a 10 minute break and after that we will continue okay sir uh, i'll i'll pass okay so all participants you may uh, take a break for uh, uh, 10 to 15 minutes and we will join around uh, 11:45 right so everybody take uh, some refreshments and uh, take some re uh, rest and then we continue around uh, 11:45 okay